Welcome to Photoshop User TV, produced by Photoshop User Magazine and the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys, Dave Cross, Matt Kroskowski, and Scott Kelby. This week's episode is brought to you in part by Empix, delivering the highest quality prints and products from your photos, period. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Well, hello and welcome to another Uninboculus episode. Uninboculus. Sorry, Uninboculus episode of Photoshop Thank User you. TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals publishers of this fine magazine right here, Photoshop User Magazine, and of course, all the accompanying stuff that NAP does. Well, folks, we are back for another week, and uh, as you see, we are missing somebody. Scott Kelby's not here this week. He's off doing the, the things that Scott does, but that doesn't mean it's not a good show. In fact, it might be better. <laughs> So, no. Can you just say that out loud? Yeah. I, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> Take that back. What, what, he, what, he, what he really said there was, <laughs> we'll, we'll miss do him. our best we'll to make We'll miss him it very up. much, yes, but we won't ever have as good of a show. That's correct. Episode 180. So on this episode, we got a bunch of stuff for you. Rick Salmon's back with one of his other little quick tips from Snapshot to Great Shot. And we got some tutorials from yeah. you and I. And we also have some, uh, some pretty cool news. So if, if you don't know, when we come around Photoshop World, we usually have to record a couple of shows ahead of time just to make up for the time that we're away. So this is really our first show back in the studio after Photoshop World. And, uh, and we announced something pretty big at Photoshop World. It's the NAP Watermark Creator. Okay, so this is a panel that plugs into Photoshop CS4. There's a video and the download and everything on how to use it, but essentially it watermarks a whole bunch of images for you. So you don't need to write an action, you don't need to know batch processing, all that stuff. It's a panel that does it for you. If you're a NAP member, go to the NAP member website, you'll see it on the site. Yeah, one of the very cool things about it answers the question that people have always come up to me and said at seminars is, well, I figured out how to do an action if all my images are landscape, yeah. but what if some are portrait and some are landscape, and that's what this does. It lets you put, choose the position yeah. of where the watermark and the size, the opacity, and so on. Very cool and exclusive to NAP members, so check cool it out. Now, Mr. Kloskowski, you have yes. a tutorial for us. I do have a tutorial. So uh, I actually came up with this one last night, as a matter of fact, <laughs> because uh, I, was, I was going through, um, my kids play baseball, and I was going through a, a photographer that recently took photos of my kids uh, playing baseball the other Saturday, you know, the group shots and everything. And I went through his website and he had some neat stuff on there and I saw something he did where he photographed uh, the kids basically in broad daylight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you could tell he used a little bit of flash on the, for side lighting and whatnot, but he photographed the kids in broad daylight and then he went in, obviously went into Photoshop and, and darkened the background and gave a pretty cool effect and then also put like a magazine cover behind mm. him. So uh, you can do some pretty neat stuff here. Just It actually just involves a very simple gradient. So let's go ahead and grab the uh, quick selection tool here. And I'm gonna go and just try to make a, a very quick selection around this runner. Now let's go in here and clean it up. So the quick selection tool for the most part works pretty good. You're gonna see it doesn't always get the edges perfectly, but if you kind of zoom in there a little bit, which we will do, You'll see it saves you a lot of time from doing all that complex masking and whatnot. And if you happen to go over a part of the photo, which you'll see I'm inevitably going to do here, just hold down your Option key on Mac or the Alt key on a PC and you can bring that area of the selection back. Let's get right between the feet here. And you can see it kind of inadvertently selected his leg, which is not quite what we wanted. So we'll hold down Option or Alt, we'll remove that selection from there. And that gives us, for the most part, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good base selection to go by. Let me just clean up one edge right over here. So after you get that selection down, oh, one more part over here. And then we can go into uh, Refine Edge. So I'm going to go to Select Inverse because I want that selection to actually go around the runner. Sorry, one more part. I'm going to get this right, I promise. <laughs> now I'm going to go up here to Refine Edge. And inside Refine Edge, you can click these icons along the bottom, and it shows you the overlay. It'll also show you on black, 
or on white. So you can get a pretty neat idea of what this is going to look like. Now, we are going to be putting this basically on black, so this is a good, a good example of where a fine edge comes in handy. I can adjust these settings and come in here and just kind of feather and even contract the selection a little bit, but I get a preview of how it's going to look. You can see this is before <laughs> and that's after. <laughs> Didn't quite give me the preview I was hoping for. Uh, but you can see that it's, it's actually starting to soften the edge a little bit there because we are using some of the feathering amount. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now I have my selection and what we're going to do here is invert the selection back the other way because now I want the background to be selected. I'm going to create myself a new layer. I'm going to take my gradient tool and set the foreground color to black and then come up here to the gradient picker. We're going to choose that second gradient which is black to transparent. Okay. And all I'm going to do is drag from the top down. And you can see how we start to darken the background a little bit. Well, if I really want to darken the background, I can come down here and just drag it down. And I basically lost my selection. <laughs> Let's go back a second and come down here and drag it down. And you can see it totally darkens that background. OK, so it looks, it looks like they, it doesn't look like they were photographed in, some, you know, in front of some houses or whatnot. It darkens the background. And then what we'll do is let's go back up here to select, choose reselect, and I'll create a new layer. And I'm going to bring in some darkening from the bottom here. All right. Deselect. And what's neat about it is because we did that on a separate layer, now I can come in here and reduce the opacity of that layer. And I can just kind of fine tune it and, uh, and just really make it look like there's some cool lighting happening uh, behind and around the runner here. Now, a couple other things. Uh, they put some text on here. So let's grab the type tool. Let's set my foreground color over here to white. And uh, we're going to just type in, let's type in running, not running, running. And let's make it a lot larger. And we position this right up at the top. What's cool about this is that you already have a selection that's going to help you get the text behind the runner because we obviously don't want it to be right in front of his face and that's the whole effect that's what mm -hmm. I'd seen on their website which was they put the title of the magazine behind them so you could see here we've got that selection all I got to do here is just command click on the Mac or control click on the PC on that layer to create the selection and then come up here and just add a layer mask to it and you can see it just puts it right behind his head and then we could always finish it up magazine Let's bring the size of that text down a little bit. Okay, so really popular stuff, you know, especially mm -hmm. if you've got kids or grandkids or, or friends or family that have kids that play sports. It's kind of a neat effect that you can do, and, and everybody digs it. I mean, parents just oh, yeah. flip out when they see their kids in a, you know, a kind of a fake magazine of some just, sort. Just out of a minute, go back and show the original now. Oh yeah, just to show what there was all this stuff in the background, like houses and yeah, wires so and everything else. Here's before. And then after. So I think that's part so, of what makes that cool is it didn't have to be a photo taken on a very carefully chosen backdrop. Exactly. You know, you exactly. Because just... then and the kids were the the field where my kids play baseball. No matter where you position them, there's always mm -hmm. there's always funky stuff happening behind them. It's not like that perfect field that right. you know we might hope for. Very cool. Thank you, sir. I can imagine some like lights look like stadium lights up in the back, Ooh, little blurry take... circles, and all kinds of interesting yeah. possibilities. Looks cool with soccer, football, mm -hmm. just you know any sport. Very cool. Well, Mr. Cross, I think it's time for a break. I think it is. All right. Well, folks, we'll see you back here in just a few seconds. And we've got Dave's tutorial and contest and all that other fun stuff. All right, beautiful, beautiful. OK, a little bit closer. OK, that's it. Work a little bit to the side. Yep. There we go. That's it. Hold it. Time for a close up. Brad, need tuner up too. Can I get that hair adjusted, please? All right, the hair's looking good, looking good, all right. That's it, work the hair, work the hair, come on. That's it, give it to me, there we go, beautiful, beautiful, yes, work the hair. That, oh, look at the eye, give me that, oh, there you go, beautiful, excellent, hold that pose. There we go, beautiful. Well, you know, Rick Salmon was in town recently, and mm -hmm. in the last couple of episodes, we've seen little segments from Rick called Snapshot to Great Shot. And he has another one for us. We love I those segments we. because it means that we have to do one less thing on the show. <laughs> and 
Yeah, that's and because it's yeah, that's the, the only reason. <laughs> no, because they're <laughs> very cool great and too. lots of fun. So take a look at what Rick has for us this time around. <laughs> Hey, it's Rick Snapshots to Great Shots. Simon back again with Jen from Kelby Media. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Well, listen, I want a great shot of me in here. This is okay. a low light situation. We could take a natural light picture boosting up the ISO, but what I want to do is get, I want to get a nice detailed shot of me, which means okay. you have to use a flash. So okay. let's try this. I know what's going to happen, by the way. Let's put it on the program mode and let's mm -hmm. pop up the flash. This is what most people will do to take a snapshot. Okay, so just pop in this button right here. Turn this on. There there we you go. go. I'm gonna go right over here. Okay. Turn the camera on the side for a nice portrait. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now what happened is this. Jen's looking at this picture. We have what's called a ghostly shadow here yeah. because the flash is on the side like this, mm -hmm. and because you're on the program mode, what happens is the camera selects a higher shutter speed, so you don't get any camera shake. Right. Right. That's why you get that ghostly shadow. Okay. But we're going to turn that snapshot into a great shot just by adding an accessory flash here. Never leave home without one of these. Okay. We're going to put it on manual. The only time okay. I use manual actually is when I'm taking a flash picture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in the right exposure for the available light. Okay. okay. So if I took a shot right now, I'd get a nice natural light shot. But what I'm going to do here to get the flash shot. We're going to bounce it off the ceiling, okay? Okay. Because this is a very, a relatively small light source, right? Right. By bouncing off the ceiling, the ceiling be made you look. <laughs> the, ce <laughs> the ceiling becomes the light source. Now, if we pan up, we can see that the ceiling's blue. So I'm yeah. going to have a blue tint, but I could fix that in Photoshop. Even okay. though the white balance is set for flash, now it's going to the light's going to have a blue tint. But we okay. can fix that in Photoshop or Lightroom. Okay. So we balance the light, right, from the flash to the available light. The flash is still on TTL, automatic, all right? Let's see. Guess what? Another example of turning a, <laughs> who, who would have known? I know, it's a great, it's a great shot. Turning a snapshot into a great That's shot is fantastic. Re, it's really not that hard, right? <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Well, hey, great stuff from uh, Rick Salmon. He's always got some, uh, some really neat things to share with everybody. Well, hey, folks, uh, we got another quick break, and then we're going to wrap up the show with Dave's tutorial, contest, and all that other fun stuff. We'll see you back here in a minute. Everybody, we're back, and uh, with no further ado, we have a tutorial from none other than Dave Cross. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Well, I want to show you a little, a little something which uh, I've been playing around with different methods to make selections, and of course there are plenty of different ways, and one of the things that we're sometimes faced with is something that looks fairly straightforward when you first start, and then you start thinking, oh, maybe it's not quite that easy. Because I'm a big fan, like Matt, the earlier tutorial was the quick selection tool, but I tried it in this case, and there was just, it wasn't working very well. I thought, well, it is kind of a circular shape, so I thought I'd start with my uh, elliptical selection tool, and originally was going to use transform selection. Now, I have found in some cases, when you're trying to transform using this, it's just a little hard to see the edges, in this case, because I've got a silver, uh, whatever that is, Sheriff Ranger Star and the edge of the, it's just a little hard to see what's going on. So instead, an alternate method is to go into Quick Mask. So press Q for Quick Mask and then just use regular free transform. So it's the same end result, but now it's a lot easier, I think, in this particular case to see what you're doing because as you're moving, you can very clearly see when I have mm -hmm. too much and not enough. And you can <coughs> tweak it further. Command or Control, click on each corner, then you can do the corners a little more independently than the rest. So just giving you just a little bit extra control. So I, that's giving me the outside. Now, same thing for the inside. Instead of trying to worry about lining it up, I'm just gonna make a selection, fill it with black, 
and then do the same thing, free transform on that, and then use this to make it fit. So again, it's just a whole lot easier instead of remembering all sorts of combinations of holding down the shift key and the space bar and all kinds of other things to make it fit. You can just very quickly get to that point, and then the final step would be take the polygonal, 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 Gaussian, Gaussian <laughs> tour, and just make another little selection a bit at a time. And I'm not going to worry too much if I don't get it perfect the first time because, because since we're in quick mask, it's fairly easy for me to just keep tweaking and fine tuning. So I'm just trying to get a fairly good pass for this time. Each time I want to change direction, I'm clicking the mouse because it's obviously not a perfectly straight line. Something like that. And then this one I would fill with white. Now it's not perfect, but you can see it wouldn't be that hard because we're in quick mask to see the areas that need further adjustment. It's just a matter of anything you don't want selected, you're going to fill with black. Anything you do want selected, you'll fill with white and eventually press Q for quick mask. Let's just put on a new layer and see what we got. It's not too bad. It's obviously it still needs a bit of work. Yeah. But the key point is that <coughs> quick mask and free transform is basically the same result as that transform selection. But in some cases, depending on the colors that are involved, it's just a little easier to see. So just another alternate method to do some selecting work. And Dave, you just gave me the one for the road tip for today. Well, good. I have an idea nice. for it. That's perfect then. All right. So uh, contest time? Yes, certainly. Now, is there an answer? There is, but I think we need to go back a couple of episodes because a little interesting thing happened in uh, episodes, couple, the last two, not the last two, 177 and 178, mm -hmm. I think it was, through a kind of a, a little mix-up thing. We actually had the same question on both shows. Oh, gosh, So we got people writing in and going, I don't understand. It was just a mix-up. So the bottom line was, for that second show, it was an easy answer because we already gave it to you. So that was just one of those things. So I'm glad people were paying attention that closely to see that we had made that error. So last week, we showed you a, a dialog box and said, name this dialog. And it was the filter called custom. So either mm. filter custom would be the answer or just custom, either way. So what are we going to give them this time around? We have a couple of things this time around. First off, we have a Ooh. brand new copy of Corel Painter oh, 11. Yeah. So you will get that. Uh, you will also get a, uh, you're gonna, we're going to give away, we've got like six of these. So we're going to give away one a week for the next few weeks. Nice. Um, they're called RStudio, and it's from graphicauthority.com. And they're basically these packages that have templates, layered files, everything for books and layouts and whatnot. Uh, Graphic Authority has probably some of the best ones that are out there. And I think this one's valued at about 199 bucks, but it's got some really neat stuff in it, so we'll give you one of those. And then finally, a NAP membership for one year. If you already had a NAP membership, then we'll just extend it by a year. Very good. Well, in order to win those fabulous prizes, and that painter thing alone is mm. pretty cool. That's a pretty cool piece of software. I'm going to show you a filter, and you have to tell us what is this filter called. So go to PhotoshopUserTV.com and look for that Enter the Contest little link. Enter once. Hope you win. Good luck to you. Is it Gaussian Blur? Okay, so now I have to find another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty. Uh, what do we got left here? I know we have something left. Well, we want to give them a couple things to do. Okay, you go first. Okay, I'm going to totally guess because my network connection is not working because I was going to go to the website to get the exact name, but I believe it's called Look Good in Pictures. It's a Nikon-sponsored website hosted by Carson... Oh, a guy yeah. from who's been on all kinds of reality TV shows. But oh, Carson uh, Daly. No, not that guy. No. Cressley or Cressler or something <laughs> like that. Mine, then. <laughs> if you go to my blog, you get all the details, davecross.blogspot.com. But it's actually kind of cool because it's really, I think, aimed mostly at hobbyists. But at the same time, he interviews some well-known photographers and gets some cool. little tips. So it's just kind of kind of cool. So we'll put the real name on here somewhere or on our website. All right. So uh, I have some inspiration for you. Go check out outdoor-photos.com. And uh, it's just kind of an inspiring website of landscape photography. Lots of neat stuff hmm. on there. Uh, again, it's outdoor-photos.com. Now, just so Matt doesn't do two things in a row, uh, since we didn't mention it all throughout this whole show, don't forget cruisingthroughlife.com if you want to join us and Corey Barker in the Caribbean Caribbean cruise. Go. Thanks, Dave. That was swell. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so here's a neat one. So Dave was using quick mask mode. 
Uh, you can get into quick mask mode just by hitting the letter Q. Uh, you'll also see the quick mask icon, which is down at the bottom of the toolbox. But here is something that's pretty neat. I'm going to double click on the icon, and it opens up the quick mask options. And you saw that Dave's overlay was red. If you happen to be working with something that's red, that red color can be difficult. So you can come inside here, and you can change it to another color. You can even change the opacity, but that's not it, Dave. Oh, that's not it. Cool. That's not it I because that it. that's kind of cool. You know, if you it's, most of the time red works fine, mm -hmm. I don't change it that many times. Uh, but you know what I do change? Uh, where the color indicates, for me personally, it makes more sense to indicate selected areas because I feel like I'm, when I'm painting with Quick Mask, mm -hmm. which I use a lot, and I'm painting with that brush. For me, it makes sense to be painting the selection, so mm -hmm. what I'm painting becomes red. I don't know. It's just a, yeah. a thing. So I always come inside here and change it to selected areas because it's not there by default. That's it. Personal preference. Personal That's preference. That's how you change it. One for the road. Very good. Well, we're almost out of time. <laughs> That's funny to say, like we actually have a time. We're almost <laughs> out of timer. Network gets really mad at us. <laughs> we're almost out of timer. So uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our sponsors who sponsor our show. Make sure you visit them and tell them you heard about it on Photoshop User TV. And uh, next time we'll have another show that comes after this one. Yeah. So probably another probably one, after, one that. after that. Yeah. We'll, we'll be, keep doing it until someone tells us to stop. <laughs> and don't please don't tell us to stop. So uh, I'm Dave Cross. I'm Mac Laskowski. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time on Photoshop User TV. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.